Good morning from and beyond Pinder Private Game Reserve. My name is Damon and I'm one of the rangers here. And today we're going to be having a look at another skull to help us understand how the animal works. Now a skull this size can surely only belong to one animal and that's an African elephant. Now to give you an idea It's really heavy. Let's take a look at a couple of the features that help an elephant to survive. Now some of you may be wondering, if this is an elephant, where is its trunk? And the answer to that is that an elephant's trunk has got no bones in it. It's made up of muscles, about 40,000 of them, which is incredible when you compare it to all the muscles in the whole human body, which is only about 639. Now this, is where the elephant's trunk will have attached to its skull and that elephant would have been able to use its trunk for things like pushing trees over but also for things that are super dexterous like picking up a fruit off of the ground or using its trunk to wipe some mud out of its eye. Now in addition to helping to feed this elephant also would have been able to use that trunk to suck up water to drink. As well as to gather up mud or dust to throw on itself to help it to keep cool on a hot day or to help to get rid of parasites. And lastly, it's important to remember what a trunk is and that is a specially modified nose. And with a nose that big, you can only imagine how good this elephant's sense of smell must have been. And this is where the air passages would have been into the elephant's skull from its trunk. So this is where it would have breathed through and where it would have smelt through. And an elephant's sense of smell is so good that some scientists believe it's the best sense of smell in the animal kingdom. And that elephant would have used its sense of smell to help it to find food and water and other elephants. Next up, let's have a look at where an elephant's tusks would have been attached to its body. And to do that, we're going to need to flip the skull over. See these big holes here? So this is where an elephant's tusks would have grown out of its head. And of course a tusk is basically just a modified incisor tooth of an elephant. So your incisor teeth are these ones here in the front and the tusk would have grown out from here and the tusk would have grown throughout the elephant's life from when it was very small up until the moment and just before it died and the tusks may have been long, they might have been short, they might have been curved, they might have been straight. Elephants sometimes have no tusks, sometimes they have one tusk and sometimes they even have tusks that look completely different to each other. It all depends on their genetics. And what this elephant would have used his tusks for is he would have used them for fighting with other elephants. He would have used them to help him dig for roots and to scrape bark off of trees to eat. And even to help him clean bits of dirt off of grass that he plucked up out of the ground before he put it into his mouth. Let's take a closer look at this elephant's very special molar teeth. Now elephants, being herbivores, and because they eat so many different sorts of plants, they eat grass, they eat leaves, they eat fruit, and they even eat the bark of trees. So they need very, very, very strong teeth with big ridges on them to help them to grind down all of that plant matter. Just imagine chewing bark. It's very, very, very coarse, and so you've got to have very strong teeth to help to break it down. And that's why this elephant has got these big grooves here to help to grind its plant food down. But now, of course, as it chews, these teeth are going to get worn out and eventually this tooth will be smooth and then the elephant won't be able to chew properly. So what elephants have evolved to do is that when a tooth starts to get smooth, a new tooth comes through. So have a look over here. He has a new molar tooth that's getting ready to push this tooth out when it gets too flat and too smooth. And that will help the elephant to make sure 
that it doesn't get to a stage where it can't chew its food properly. But now an elephant only has six sets of these molar teeth. So when it gets to set number six, it doesn't have any more teeth to replace the old ones. And when that happens, it means that when that elephant's teeth start to get smooth and, and flat, and when that elephant can't chew its food properly anymore, it means that it will start to become malnourished because it isn't getting enough nutrition. And very slowly the elephant starts to die. And then it will start to look for very soft plant material to feed on, things like reeds um, and soft grasses. But unfortunately, that is the start of the end for the elephant and eventually it will die from malnutrition. And so normally that happens at about 60 years of age and it's quite a neat little mechanism, if you will, that nature has almost provided to ensure that the biggest animals out here that don't really have very many natural predators don't overpopulate the earth. I hope that that's given all of you some useful insight into how an elephant lives and how it behaves. Of course, understanding animal behavior is one of the most important steps to becoming a ranger. So thank you for joining us this week and we'll see you next time with another animal skull and another episode of How an Animal Works.